Hello and welcome to this draw along event. My name is Ailey Muldoon and I'm an illustrator. I'm so excited to be doing this event with you today. I love taking part in Edinburgh International Book Festival and I'm really excited to be showing you a little step by step drawing and talking a bit about illustration. So before we get drawing there was a couple of things that I wanted to show you and talk about so if you bear with me for a minute or two before we get drawing. Um, so as I said I'm an illustrator and I think it's the best job in the world because we get to draw pictures all day. But an illustrator might draw pictures for all sorts of things. So it could be for posters, for advertising, for packaging, for toys, um, comic books, anything really. My favourite part of my job is when I get to illustrate a book though, especially picture books. I think illustration can be so powerful to tell stories and what I love to do is get a story that someone else has written and start to think about who those characters might be and how I can bring it alive. And one of the most important things to remember when you're illustrating something, whether it's something you've written yourself or something that another person has written, is that the illustrations can tell a different story to the words. So that might sound a little bit strange, but if you think about it, it makes sense. Like if the words in a book say, for instance, the boy opened the door, you don't just want to have the words saying that and then a really boring picture where a boy is opening a door. What you can do with the illustrations is you can start to add to the story and maybe tell a little bit more of the story. So it could be that the boy is really scared about what's behind the door, so you might show them looking really worried or anxious, and then you're instantly telling a little bit more to the reader. You could even show a hint of what's coming out from behind the door, and then the, story, the illustration has instantly become a storytelling thing itself, where it doesn't need words, you can see them all in pictures. Aren't illustrations great? Um, I've got a couple of examples of that that I wanted to show you actually. This is a book I didn't write or illustrate, it's by somebody called Jessica Love, it's called Julian is a Mermaid. And what I love about this book, there's hardly any words actually, um, there's just lots and lots of pictures. It's about this little boy Julian, he's obsessed with mermaids. So we start off that he's reading a book about mermaids um, and then we can see his imagination take hold and he starts seeing them everywhere. And he's imagining becoming one himself and swimming with the fishes and all these wonderful colour colourful scenes. Then he's back in the real world and you can see that he's actually seeing mermaids. There's some girls splashing in the in this uh, fountain here and he says, Nana did you see the mermaids? And she says, I saw them honey. Which in those simple words just shows that not only is Julian seeing all of these things um, around him that maybe aren't there but his imagination is playing but his granny's really happy about that. She's going to let his imagination take hold and encourage that. Such a beautiful book. And another kind of funny example I wanted to show you is this one here by Lou Peacock and Yasmin Ishmael called Nuts. And nuts is pretty much the only words inside this book apart from I think they shout no at one point. But what it does is it tells this whole story about these squirrels that are fighting over these nuts pretty much just in the pictures. So if you read this story without any pictures it wouldn't really make much sense at all. It would just be nuts, my nuts, over and over again. And what we see is the development of this story, how they end up learning to share. They have a bit of an argument as well. Um, but the whole story is funny and sweet and it's told in just these illustrations. So there you go, you see the power of illustration. So now I'm gonna show you the book that we're gonna take inspiration from for our drawing today. And it's this book here called My Grandfather's Song. I didn't write this book, but I did illustrate it. It's by somebody called Katrina and it is published by Acker. You can um, buy a copy on the Edinburgh International Book Festival shop. Um, it was actually initially published in Gaelic. So this is the Gaelic version here. This is the English version. Unfortunately, I don't speak Gaelic, so I can't read you that version. I would have loved to but I can read you the English version. So if you're a Gaelic speaker, you're welcome to get your hands on a Gaelic copy and have a read of it there. Um, but here we go, I'm gonna read you my grandfather's song. It's quite a moving story, it's maybe a wee bit sad, um, but it's also quite hopeful and joyful. It's about a lovely relationship between this little boy and his grandpa. So here we go. There's also a bird on every page, so when you're reading it, you try and spot the bird on every page. So here we go, my grandfather's song. Hopefully you can see the illustrations here. My grandfather would always wait for me at the edge of the forest, big strong hands, a warm friendly smile and his bag of seeds ready. I would follow him through the trees, listening to the wind blow through the happily dancing leaves and my grandfather's sure steady step. Hurry up boy, we've got work to do. I would make the holes with a little stick. My grandfather would plant the seeds. We would cover them with soil together. And when we were finished, my grandfather would sing a song so that the trees and I would thrive. 
With sun and with rain, we all grow fast. We'll have a day and a night. We'll have life and rest. And with every year that passed, the forest grew up around us. And I grew big too, until I was even bigger than my grandfather. I learned that every tree was useful. Oily wood would make a fine boat. Hardwood was just right for a table. From softwood, you would get paper for books. Each day he'd be there waiting, waving to me from the edge of the forest, hands still strong, smile still warm, and his bag of seeds at the ready. And, through, and though I noticed my grandfather wasn't as quick as before, and that he needed to sit down far more often, and though his teeth jangled when he ate, we were so happy working together. But one day, when I went to meet him, he wasn't there. I waited for ages, until at last I saw him coming. His step was now slow, his back was now bent, and he used a stick to keep himself steady. I waved to him from the edge of the forest, and when he stood before me, he smiled warmly and gave me his bag of seeds. Hurry up, lad, you've got work to do. Without another word, he sat among the trees, the sun shining on his old face, and slept at peace. One last gentle day in the forest that he loved. I make the holes with a little stick. I plant the seeds. I cover them with soil. I do this by myself. But when the wind blows through the happily dancing leaves, I can hear my grandfather still saying to me, With sun and with rain, we all grow fast. We'll have a day and a night. We'll have a life and a rest. So there you go. It is sad because obviously his grandfather isn't physically with him at the end of the story, but he is with him in a way. He's with him in all the trees around him, um, in all the memories that they made together. I wanted to show that this was quite a joyful story, that these two characters had a wonderful relationship, and this little boy, everything about him as he's grown up has been impacted and influenced by his wonderful grandfather, and every time he walks through the forest, like at the end when he's pushing his own child in a buggy, he's wearing his grandfather's hat, the wind is blowing those leaves that were blowing around his grandfather and him all those years ago, and these big curved lines I wanted to show represent the song that his grandfather sang and will always blow in the wind and the leaves and his, he will always hear it and he'll tell his child all about his grandfather. So I wanted to show it was a very joyful book um, and hopefully I've communicated that in the colours and some of the illustrations and that kind of thing. So now it's time for us to get drawing. So I'm going to show you just a second um, how I would draw the little boy character at two different stages, when he's younger and when he's older. So that was quite a big challenge to draw the two characters at different ages um, and how their faces change and that kind of thing. So that's what we're going to focus on, but we're also going to think a little bit about portraying character and emotion in the faces and also about movement. So we need to grab a pen or pencil and paper and join me for a draw along. Thank you. Okay, so now it's time to get drawing. So what we're going to do today is we're going to draw the little boy character from my grandfather's song. So here's a reminder of what he looks like. This is him when he's quite little. Now he grows up throughout the book. He starts off at about five years old and ends up as a sort of older man. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I would draw him at two different stages. The first drawing is going to be when he's about this age. So we're going to draw him a little bit younger and then we're going to draw him as a teenager. And it's because I want to show you how you might approach drawing people of different ages. People's faces change, their bodies, their facial expressions, the way they move, um, and it's quite fun to explore how you can draw those at different stages. So the drawing that I'm going to use as inspiration for the first drawing we're going to do is this one here. So you can see he's running and he's throwing leaves up in the air, but what I think we'll do is we'll draw him running but maybe waving. So he's meeting his grandfather in the woods and he's waving at him. So this is the kind of pose that we're going to draw. Now I'm just going to use a pen. You're welcome to use pencil. You can use coloured pencils if you like. You can just watch this step-by-step -step tutorial and draw it later or you can draw along with me. It's totally up to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing his face. Whenever I draw any characters I always start with the heads. I know some people start with parts of the body, with hands, with um, shoulders, that sort of thing, but I always start with their face. So I've drawn a little line here. This is going to be the side of his Face. So it's sort of his cheek going into his neck. And next I'm going to draw his nose. And he's quite little, so his nose is a really cute little button nose. It's kind of turned up and it's got a little kind of bump underneath for his nostril. 
really dinky button nose is going to get bigger when he gets older. And um, next I'm going to draw his mouth. So his mouth is smiling. He's got a great big smile on his face and his mouth actually open. He's laughing. He's so excited to see his grandpa. Now I'm going to draw his eyes. In our picture in the book, his eyes were two tiny little dots, but I'm going to draw them closed actually, because he's going to be really, really happy to see his grandpa. So I'm going to draw these little upside down curves like this. And that's because sometimes when we're really, really happy, if you try smiling really hard, you can see that your eyes kind of turn almost closed. Um, and when you do them upright like that, it shows that your character is happy. You can also show emotion in the eyebrows. So next I'm going to draw his eyebrows kind of up as if he's surprised, not really as high up on his head as they would be if he was surprised or shocked, but certainly open and up. If they were facing down towards his nose, he might look angry. Um, but this is going to show that he's happy. So the only bit of colour I am going to use while we're doing the face is I'm going to do two little pink circles for his cheeks to show that he's a bit flushed from running and that he's really, really happy with his rosy cheeks to see his grandpa. So now I'm going to draw his ear and his ear is going to be quite big, I think. Um, his face is quite chubby at this stage, so I put the ear a bit further back to show that his face is quite wide and there's another little circle inside to show the inside of his ear. Next, I'm going to draw his hair. And he's got quite messy, spiky hair. So I want you to take your pen or pencil and just do a really messy, jaggy line to show the outer edge of his hair. The good thing about this is that if you don't quite do the right shape or you think oh, I've made the head too big or too small, you can just use your pen or pencil to scribble over the top and create a kind of new edge of his head or hair. He's got really, really messy hair. Um, he's He obviously doesn't care. He doesn't brush his hair much. He's got better things to be doing busy off to meet his grandpa. I like to imagine some of the things about the character that I'm drawing as well. So maybe you're making up a new character as we go here. You could use a different coloured pen or pencil. Maybe they've got red hair, <coughs> blonde hair. Um, here we go. So the other thing to think about is that our character was running, weren't they? So I want you to think a bit about movement and how we illustrate that. So I'm going to draw the other side of his neck here and the top of his jumper. So right now he's just this sort of weird disembodied head with the top of the neck of his jumper there. I want to start drawing the arms next. I find arms are quite tricky. Not as tricky as hands, but still quite tricky. So I'm going to draw this arm that's kind of bunched up next to his body as he's running. And it's going to be, it's almost like a big um, curly K shape, like a capital K C. Um, and it's a big curved line like that. And there's the other line inside to show the other part of his arm. And it stops there where his jumper ends, because next we have to tackle hands, but hands, as I say, are quite tricky. So we'll wait until we've got the arms in place. The other arm is up in the air. So it's another curved line, but it's a steeper curve and it goes up around his head. There we go. And there it is up in the air. And that's the part of his jumper going down like this. Now we've got his body. Perfect on the bottom of his jumper and the edge of his sleeve there. So hands, now, we want to show this one is waving. So if you practice, it's quite good when you're drawing to practice your, your uh, poses or whatever your character's doing. So imagine what your hand does when it's waving. All fingers could be out like that, but I'm gonna draw it slightly from the side with the thumb coming across. So I'm gonna start by drawing his first finger, his pointing index finger, second, third, and fourth. I know what you're thinking, that I've missed off that thumb, but it is coming across his hand like that. So there we go. He's waving at his grandpa. The next hand we're going to cheat slightly. We're going to show it bunched into a fist because that's what you sometimes do when you're running. So we're just going to see the four knuckles and the start of his pinky coming around the bottom there. So now we've got his fist running. Next, and probably the hardest part, are his legs. His legs are in two different positions. One is running forwards and it's kind of straight and the other one is curved, kicking out behind him. So... The one that's coming forwards, I'm going to do like it is in the book and have his sort of jeans end a little bit cropped. So we see a bit of his ankle, quite a big thick leg there. And the other one is kicked out behind him like that. There we go. So now we've got the two shapes, the leg coming forward, there's his ankle. And I'm going to draw him wearing trainers. So that's the sort of shape of his wee trainers. And he's got his shoelaces tied, very important. You could draw any type of shoe you wanted though. Maybe he's got some boots on um, or maybe he's wearing bare feet. If you'd like to attempt to draw feet, which are even harder than hands, I would say. Um, and there's his other trainer, 
coming out behind him like that. And again, shoelace is tied, but maybe there's one twisty shoelace getting away from him there. <sighs> Danger waiting to happen. So there we've got him running along to meet his grandpa. So that is our boy aged, I would say about five or six. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna draw the same character and he's gonna be a teenager. So I'm gonna grab a new bit of paper. You can draw on the same bit of paper if you'd like, or you can um, grab a new one like me, it's up to you. And don't worry if you've got scrap paper, these can be practice drawings and you can work on them later. So my new drawing, I'm gonna show you the things that have changed about his face. So I'll move this out of the way now so you can see what I'm doing. And we've got the side of his face is where we're gonna start again. And it's gonna be a little bit longer and straighter. So there we go. What's happened is he's got thinner and he's got a lot taller. So the side of the face is longer. And next that nose is no longer a cute little button nose. Now it's a big, long, straight nose. There's still a little curve for the nostril, but it's a big, long, straight nose. And he's not got his eyes closed in this one. He's going to have his eyes open. So two little dots for the eyes. And now we're going to deal with the mouth. That was what we did, wasn't it? So he's still going to be smiling. He's still happy to see his grandpa. There's a little smile there. The next thing, and this is going to be different to when he was younger, is the eyebrows. So they're still curved up the way. Happy to see his grandpa. But they're a bit thicker. So his hair's grown. And his eyebrows have also become thicker and they're maybe about to join in the middle. There we go. So now he's already looking a little bit older. I'm going to bring that nose up a little bit further. There we go. Next I'm going to draw his ear. His ear was quite big when he was younger so he's still got a big ear but now that the rest of him has grown it doesn't look quite so big. So there it is and he's still got that lovely spiky black hair. So we're going to just do another jaggy line around for the shape of his hair. And now obviously he will have had a few haircuts in his time, um, but he's keeping the same style. Still not got much time for brushing his hair, I think. Once you've got this uh, sort of practicing of drawing facial expressions and movement, you can obviously create lots of different characters as well. Maybe you're going to draw a girl or, um, you know, any kind of different character you like. There we go. So that is his spiky hair and we're going to show his neck coming down behind him. So he's obviously got quite a bit thinner, he's the top of his jumper again. And instead of having him running to meet his grandpa, he's a little bit more relaxed now. He's a little bit cooler, although he's still got these little pink cheeks because I think they're really fun. There we go. Um, and he's leaning against a tree waiting for his grandpa. So he's kind of slumped against the tree. We're going to show his shoulder curved like that. And that's the top of his arm is now coming down by his side. Actually, I'm gonna put his hand in his pocket. So there's his wrist and the top part of his hand is hidden inside his pocket. Again, I'm cheating. I'm not drawing one of the hands, am I? Um, and there we go. So his body is kind of leaning forward. He's quite relaxed. This is jumper. But that other arm is still up in the air. He's still waving at his grandpa. He's pleased to see him. So there we go. And the arms are thinner than they were um, for the little boy because everything's sort of stretched out now. So let's practice that hand again with that forefinger, second, third, fourth, and then the thumb comes across the palm of the hand, waving. So there we go. And his fingers are much longer as well than his chubby little hands from when he was younger. Let's go back to this. Okay. Um, next, we're going to draw his legs. So we're going to have one coming straight down to the ground. And actually, the one that's in front of his body is actually going to be leaning against the tree. So let's see if we can do this now. This is the part I always get wrong, is the length of a leg. <laughs> it's quite tricky. But if you do get the length wrong when you draw it, you can just take a bit of what we call artistic license. Let me see. And you can add, I've decided that's too short. So what I'm going to do is show a bit of his ankle showing there. And he's got, again, little trainers on and it's kind of leaning against the bottom of the tree so there's his other leg coming down like this and this one's flat on the ground and actually his feet are going to be bigger too so see what I did there I've done his feet too short so I'm going to make these they've got little coloured bits on the toes of the shoes see how there's never really a mistake you can always fix a mistake in a drawing and if you really can't fix it, you can start again and 
just learn from the mistake that you made and the next one will be better. So there we go. So he's leaning on the bottom of the tree, which I'm going to draw coming up like this. Let's imagine it's the roots of a tree. There we go. And you can have a look in the book if you have a copy or um, maybe just look outside actually at real trees. And you can see how I draw trees. And then you can maybe draw some of your own trees, lots and lots of branches. Um, trees have to be one of my favourite things to draw, I think. I'm doing this one quite fast, but there we go. If I had lots of time, I think I would add lots of knots in the trees to show the shape of the wood and all the bark. And we'd add lots and lots of leaves and maybe a bird in the tree as well. But for now, I'm just going to add in this sort of hint of the top of a tree. So he's leaning against a tree waiting for his grandpa. There's some grass at the bottom there. So now we have it. We have our little boy when he was younger, waving and running to meet his grandpa. And then our older boy waving at his grandpa in the distance. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed that step-by-step -step drawing tutorial. And if you would like to draw another character, you're free to obviously um, take some inspiration from these and think about lots of other characters you could draw. Maybe you can make up your own stories to go along with them as well. Um, but yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining me for that draw along. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, you can buy a copy of my grandfather's song on the Edinburgh International Book Festival bookshop. And you can also join me for another event, which I'll be doing later today. And you can also join on Catch Up, which is a colouring event. So grab some colouring pens and join me for a little bit of that if you'd like. Thanks so much. <laughs>